Hey everybody, welcome back, Buyer's Blueprint. Today I'm gonna to talk about what you probably see on the screen right there, warranty. I could have called this uh, this episode, um, uh, you know, warranty, yes or no, or warranty, what's the right price to pay? Warranty, should I take it? Warranty, which is the right one to take? Uh, all these different things, but I, th I thought that maybe letting you guys fill in the blank after warranty question mark, because I'm gonna cover it all anyways. So um, today is a little different format. I'm gonna do this more of a screencast uh, because uh, truth be known, I fell off of my BMX bike at the Bulls the other day, and right now I've got a face for radio. So uh, I've put myself up into the uh, top, top corner over there, wherever I am, and uh, save yourself from uh, uh, getting distracted by my very gruesome face. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about it one of these days. But anyways, I'm moving on. So warranty, you know, um, being in the business office for many years, I get I get two calls after um, a client leaves in their car, their new car, their used car, their new used car, new to them car. And the first call is, oh, hey, Paul, um, remember we were talking and you were suggesting that I take this warranty that seemed like a pretty good deal? Do you think maybe I could still get it? <clears throat> and we all know why that is, is because he took the car to the shop, you know, uh, one month, one year, two years, three years later down the road, and, and something has come along that's a giant bill that would have been covered with the warranty and now he's thinking oh i'll just get the warranty now and they'll pay for that uh, it doesn't quite work that way i'll talk about it more later but uh no pre-existing conditions right and then the other call i get is hey paul just thought i'd call you dropping the car off for service today or picked it up from service today and the warranty covered you know xyz and you literally just saved me thousands of dollars i'm already ahead i'm already ahead of what i paid uh, first claim second claim whatever you know, first year, second year, whatever. And I swing by and I'm gonna get you a gift certificate or whatever like that. I say, yeah, bring it on, bring it on, you're welcome. Uh, but, um, so <clears throat> those are the two calls I get. And uh, the calls I don't get are from the people who get it and they, they, they either not grateful or they, you know, knock on wood, although I've never heard of this, uh, never needed it. Um, so, you know, they, they don't call because they don't have the, they don't, they don't have to call. Uh, but there's a few things I want to run through you so that you're more confident in making the decision on whether or not a warranty is right for you. So there's a few things. Uh, I'll, I'll, I have a little list here I'm going to go through, but I'm going to, I'm going to just spitball for now. Um, and that is uh, how long are you going to keep the car? How many miles are you going to put on the car? Uh, the current kilometers on the car or mileage on the car, whether or not the car is one, two, three, four, ten 10 years old, whatever. Um, uh, and how, uh, did I say how long it planned to keep the car? I did, didn't I? Um, because uh, depending on how old your car is, year-wise, and how many kilometers the car has on it, or mileage the car has on it currently, will dictate what sort of warranty is available for the car. Because warranties are, are always by the car. It has nothing to do with the person. Nothing. Zero zip zilch. Doesn't matter if you've got the crappiest credit in the world, or the best, or you put 50% down, or no money down, or traded in a car or didn't trade in a car. The warranty is all about the car you're buying. And so that said, you know, once you understand what warranty is real and what cars, it'll actually steer you into taking a different car possibly because um, a lot of warranties will have uh, a rule of 10, a lot like banks. So uh, if the car is 10 years old, they they won't have any well that's not true lgm will have uh, i think they can do th three more years so they can do three years long um uh but they'll probably reduce it down to two anyways long story short uh if the car is near to new they'll go by the in-service date so that's that's where i'll start with that point so depending on the in-service date is and whether or not your car still has factory warranty the car you're looking at still has factory warranty um you could uh get one of two types of, of warranties um, now, if your car is still within mileage and or years of, of original factory warranty, 99% chance you will be able to get an extension of the factory warranty, which is also known as exclusionary, okay? So <clears throat> when you buy a brand new car, it comes with bumper to bumper warranty, right? 
in the business office, you're not supposed to say bumper to bumper because it confuses certain people and they'll get a scratch on their bumper and they'll say, well, it's how come it's not covered? I've got bumper to bumper, but it's not vanity or, or collision. That's, that's insurance. This is mechanical breakdown. If it doesn't operate as it should inside the showroom when it's brand new, they'll fix the car for four years and 50,000 miles or 80,000 K. Um, so as long as your car still has that intact or very close to it, uh, you should be able to find a company or two or three that will offer your car an extension of factory coverage, which is exclusionary coverage. And so I wanted to show this to you here. <coughs> uh, let's see if I can't uh, get this thing to work here. Uh, let's go down here and do oval. Da, 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 da. So up at the top here, you'll see that. So these are the three plans you have. It says here, basic plus and elite. Now this is LGM. I recommend them. They're really good. I used them for years. Um, great at paying claims. There's no BS. Um, uh, and they're very simple, very simple to deal with. Um, as you can see here, it's, it's basic plus and elite. So basic is basic. And so, uh, and, and what I mean by that is it's the same coverage as you get from a lot of lower end coverages, policies that you might buy at a shadier dealership or a smaller dealership that isn't, you know, sort of a big name, so to speak. Um, and you do have to worry about those types of policies and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but you can see here that the basic plan, uh, let's see, I got to get out of this, don't I? Boom. So the basic plan uh, goes down, it covers engine, turbocharger, transmission, transfer case, drive axle. Uh, and then lately we're, they're doing a lot of electric uh, car stuff too. Uh, and then it stops at this other stuff, steering, electrical, brakes, enhanced electrical, air conditioner, and uh, so on and so forth. So the basic is sort of like engine and powertrain only, which, you know, take it if you want. Absolutely. If you've, if you, if you've had bad luck with engines, I've had an engine go on one of my, I had an old Range Rover. In fact, I still have it now. And the engine went in it. And, uh, you know, cost me $11,000. Could have cost me $500 deductible. Uh, but I didn't, uh, didn't have the policy. But anyways, uh, 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 long story short, you'll notice that all the basic plans, if, if we call it the basic plan, basic plan, you'll find that all these insurance agents uh, policies will always have the same three or four-ish uh, policies. And the basic is always basic, it's just powertrain. And that is engine, turbocharger, transmission, transfer case, drive axle. Uh, that's right. So for example, here, I've got another brochure from a different company. And here you can see it again. Here's the basic. They even call it basic as well. Engine, turbocharger, transmission, transfer case, drive axle. It's always the same thing. And it's as if it's an insurance policy just being sold by different people. You know, they're covering the same things as though you're buying it from Joe Blow instead of Jane Doe. You know? Um, so then where it goes up from there is where you start to pay or not, or you could get duped or hooped or so on and so forth. So, so take a look at this. So here, this company is called Sal, also great. They have a preferred package, which includes the steering, brakes, electrical and air conditioner and fuel system. Uh, and then from there, they go to what they call classic, uh, which I would which I sold a bunch of and or superior if the car qualified for the superior, which is the exclusionary, right? And you can see that here, superior coverage. We will pay for any mechanical breakdown of all other parts, except for those listed under exclusions, hence the name exclusionary. See that? So really, I would, I would look at this and I would say, well, I did look at this and I would explain this to my clients. I'd say, look, basic, classic or superior. There's no point in getting preferred because you're missing the meat of stuff. Like take a look over here in a, uh, uh, an enhanced electrical, you wouldn't want to be not covered for these things to save a few hundred bucks in the price of the policy between the preferred and the classic, because this here in, a, in, in enhanced electrical is where the, 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 the rubber meets the road, so to speak, right? Uh, take a look. Um, automatic climate controls, all the switches and the electronics in there, always problems. In fact, my old Range Rover had problems with that too, right? So I know that I could save people a lot of money there. Uh, but more down lower here, uh, blower motors. I had a problem with my blower motors as well. I'm not throwing Range Rover under the bus. It's just definitely buy one. If you're getting a Range Rover, buy a warranty. Um, but I wanted to, comfortable top motor, power sunroof, 
I know I saw it in here somewhere. It was, uh, it was the, um, uh, the navigation and all that good stuff. Uh, it's, it, it's, it, it's in there somewhere, but anyways, enhanced electrical. So that's, that's, that's where I would, you know, want to see what you're getting. Um, so for example, over here back at secure driver LGM, let's see advanced, uh, enhanced electrical automatic, uh, climate control programmer. It's interesting that it was the same thing. The first thing on the other brochure as well. Uh, da -da 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 DVD player navigation system right there. Let me highlight that for you. Uh, navigation. Boom. See, you're going to want that covered. Um, because nowadays, a uh, little, uh, tip from me to you, um, the guys don't try to fix anything. They just replace it. And a nav unit in a Porsche is 11 grand. The nav unit in a Land Rover is something like nine grand or something like that. And, you know, this policy here would, for a four year 80 on, a, on either of those cars would probably only cost you five grand or maybe even a little bit less, you know? And so for, let's say a hundred bucks a month, if you're financing or leasing for 48 months, it's called a hundred bucks a month. I'd rather pay a hundred bucks a month and not have to ever worry about having to pay that bill or worse um, because in my tenure I've had um, at one time I had four or five engines being replaced it was just a weird string of luck um, but I had different customers buying warranties at different times uh, over the years and they all still had a um, a, uh, a policy effective um, and it was just you know bad luck no misuse nothing weird oh except one guy he took it into a um, uh, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus here, but like a minute lube, minute tune type thing, you know, quick oil, quick Mr. Lube, quickie, quick oil change. And the guys didn't screw on the oil filter properly. And he slowly leaked out all his oil. Well, not too slowly, pretty quickly, actually. Um, and the, he was driving the car home and the engine just seized. And so uh, he took it into BMW and they're like, yeah, your, your oil um, filter is not on properly. He's like, oh, I just changed the oil yesterday or the day before. At, uh, at that oil change place, you know, 80 bucks, whatever. So, um, uh, that, that would be, um, so anyways, insurance handled that, the, the loop place insurance handled that, but anyways, things happen. And, uh, it sometimes, you know, you do end up getting uh, one, one of those cars at that point in time was an Aston Martin, $49,000, $49,000. This very company wrote a check paid done. Thank you very much. So, uh, you know, I think he paid 3,800, 4,500 bucks for his, his policy. Very happy customer. Um, and anyways, that, that's just sort of how I would want to own my vehicle, you know, um, uh, because it's better to pay hundred bucks a month and be able to afford that than, oh, you know, Hey, this year we're not going to go on vacation family because we don't, we have to, we need a car to get to and from work and get the kids to and from school. So we, we need that daily as opposed to our vacation, right? So, so I wanted to show you that. So next thing here uh, is the plus plan, which includes all these enhanced electrical things and braking, part, braking systems and obviously not brake pads, right? It's, it's never, uh, that's a different type of policy, which I don't subscribe to, which is prepaid uh, maintenance, like oil changes and things like that. And I would say that I would rather have the freedom of choice to go where I want to go on the day to get my oil changed or my brake pads changed. Or like what if I'm on vacation or something like that or on a drive, you know, and I want to go here versus there and I prepaid, you got to take it there. It just makes no sense. Right. And then also, um, uh, sometimes there's deals on, you know, Hey, this week oil change is cheap. This week uh, we'll do brake pad special. Well, there's no special, you know, you'll see that you're buying three, four, five oil changes in a row. They're not discounting it. It's full price. It's just a convenient way to put it into your financing so you don't have to write a check for it later, which again, is a lot like warranty, except those things are fixed price, whereas your breakdowns could be a small bill, it could be a giant bill. You don't know. So that's what I like about warranties. They stabilize your cost of ownership, right? So next thing is, again, the elite plan, the, the, the super shooter plan, the big plan, which is the elite, in this case is the elite. Uh, what was it over at Sal? They call it uh, superior, that's right. And uh, it covers, it's, it's exclusionary, which means they'll cover any mechanical part in the car from breakdown, except for us, except for what is on a small list of exclusions. Now, do I have, uh, do I have that here? No, I don't. 
I should have had it open uh, for you guys, but uh, it's it's very boring to read. It says things like um, vandalism. They don't cover vandalism. Car accidents. They don't cover that. Um, one interesting one is key fobs. They do not cover the key fob. They'll they'll repair or replace and make function again the remote key door opening thing if it's broken on the car side. But your key fob, if it breaks down or you lose it or breaks or stops working, that's you're on your own. There's a separate policy for that, and I'll get to that in a different video. I love those ones as well. Uh, totally can't go wrong with those. Um, so uh, and also cover, it doesn't cover on the exclusionary list, the exclusions list, and things like chrome. So if your chrome starts to bubble from salt in the road, like for example on your wheels, you got chrome wheels from that, you know, chrome sometimes starts to bubble from salt in the roads. Uh, there you go. Uh, and what else? Should I be hitting you with here? Um, I see I've gone long. I'm about 16 minutes already. That's, that's a little long, I think. I might have to shorten that down. Anyways, so let's get back over to your secure drive. And so, so things that are covered on the Elite Plan. I like the Elite Plan because just there's no there's no thinking involved. It's just it's covered, right? Unless it's one of those things like some exhaust stuff. Um, although down here you can see uh, the Elite Plan covers the exclusionary covers uh, some. Well, it covers airbags. That's good. But usually it makes mention of things in here about, about um, exhaust, uh, but all good. So uh, let's see here. So the, so you have to look for what you're buying, whether it's the silver, you know, let's say basic gold, you know, the plus, or let's say platinum, you know, the elite, the exclusionary. You got to know what you're buying, what they're offering you. A smaller dealership might not have higher end products to offer you, i.e. exclusionary. Um, a lot of times the higher end products have a cap on how much they can sell it for. So a lot of really um, hungry dealerships won't sell those because, uh, for example, uh, let's say the, the maximum markup is $2,000. Uh, they'll, they'll say, no, that's not enough. We want to we sell for more. Let's say it's a $2,500 policy and they sell for $4,500, which is very common. And, and uh, you know, because they max out the profitability of two thousand dollars, but the issue is, is that a really hungry dealership would say, "No, no, no. We we want to be able to sell that twenty five hundred dollar policy for six or seven thousand dollars. We don't want to sell. We don't want to be capped at selling for forty five hundred bucks." And so they might not choose to take a more reputable company. They'll go with slightly lower ones. So, how do you tell what you're looking at? So first things first, see if they offer the range of products, right? Uh, uh, bottom, middle, top, right? Gold, silver, platinum, whatever. Basic plus elite. Uh, and see if their top program is an exclusionary. That's the language you need to use with the business office. Say exclusionary. Is it exclusionary? And you'll see them go, uh-oh, mm -hmm. uh this guy knows what he's talking about. And so you say that and then, um, and then so find out uh, exactly whether or not your car qualifies for that because you know maybe they've got a car almost like the car you're looking at it's just one year newer or has slightly less kilometers and the car can qualify for that uh and let's say that car is i don't know five hundred dollars more a thousand dollars more but you can now get this better warranty um uh you know you can negotiate something like that with warranty now you can't they can't tell you that they're going to only sell you a car with warranty because that's called tied selling uh, but you can say, well, I'll take this warranty if I can get the other car uh, because it's exclusionary and I want exclusionary. Uh, you know, I want that, that peace of mind, right? And this car that I'm looking at presently doesn't doesn't qualify for exclusionary because the, the kilometers are too high, the mileage is too high, the, the year is too low, right? It's too old. So uh, so that's that's one way you can see if you're dealing with a higher-end product because it'll have exclusionary. The next thing you can do is ask about its, servants, uh, its service uh, requirements. So lower end products, not that I would say don't get them, because depending on what you're covering, if you're, if you're just covering major mechanical things like a, like a plus or lower, because uh, you want just a bit of peace of mind on more of the mechanically type, type stuff, because it's a slightly older car with slightly higher mileage, well then yeah, sure, get that. But make sure that you don't have to, um, for example, change the oil twice a year instead of once a year, 
right? What the higher end products will do, like the ones I've showed you here from Sal and LGM, um, I think I've got one from Route 66 over here, at least it's written, underwritten by Route 66. But anyways, uh, they what they will do is they'll say, well, you have to follow the service maintenance uh, uh, that is outlined by the manufacturer. So if you still have your books, it'll say, you know, after 80,000 K or 60,000 K or 50,000 miles, you only have to change it well once a year or every, you know, 7,500 miles or every 10,000 K or whatever it is. And as long as you stick to that and you keep your receipts, they, they, they'll just pay. The only time that you get into trouble is when, oh, hey, my car needs a new engine, you know, put the new engine in, please. Thank you. And then they say, well, there's, there's no oil in this engine. Where did it all go? And you say, well, what do you mean oil? You know, I, I, I've never changed oil. You have to change oil? Is that what that little red light was on the dash that's been on for a year? Hmm. Well, then they're not gonna pay because you're not maintaining your car to keep it running properly. And plus, when you take it in every year, uh, you know, guys can keep an eye on stuff and they can curtail things. They, insurance companies, warranty companies would rather pay for a small item than not, and then later have to pay for a big item, right? So preventative stuff is, is what this is all about as well. So that's another way you can see if if you're uh, getting a, a quality product because they don't try to get you with uh, smaller um, inconsistencies like not changing oil twice a year. Who changes the oil twice a year? Come on, right? unless it's a cab, you know, putting on a 300,000 K a year, you don't need to change your oil more than that. Um, so also deductibles. So um, what you'll find is, is better products will offer you a larger deductible. Seems strange, counterintuitive, but it's true. Uh, 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 uh. Lower end products will entice consumers with no deductible options or $100 options, which is great for people who are super tight. If you're super tight, then you gotta take the warranty because if you can't afford a few bucks a month, how are you going to afford, you know, when you put the, 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 the warranty in your financing? Um, or, by the way, some warranties will offer financing on their own on the side. you got to be careful if it's free free, free interest, 0%, zero, zero percent, or possibly up to 19 or higher percent interest. So you got to look out for that. You might as well put it on your own visa if that's the case, right? You get some points back, right? But anyways, uh, deductibles, yeah. So you'll have the better companies offering you a higher deductible. Um, and, and why that is, is because it prevents people from bringing the car in for no reason. Oh, I think I maybe possibly heard a noise. Check it out. You know, and then, you know, they're, they're spending money on diagnosis and things when, because you're not on the hook, right? Um, so what they'll do, better warning companies will do, is especially for more expensive cars too. Um, you, you know, if, if you're going to change something in a Mercedes Benz, you don't mind paying $500. Uh, and plus when you pay $500, the price of the policy comes down as well. So when you have a lower deductible, the price of the policy is more money. So you have to do a little bit of math. You have to say, okay, well, if I went with a $0 deductible versus the $500 deductible, and I made one claim per year over the five years, let's just say, that would save me 2,500 bucks. But you might find that the $0 deductible um, uh, 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 policy is four or $5,000 more. So you'll think, well, if that's the case, my car would have to break down at least twice a year for me to break even on this. And then of course, if, the, if your car was breaking down two, three, four times a year, you'd be thinking to yourself, well, I got a lemon, man. I got I to gotta trade out of this thing. So that leads to another policy uh, uh, thing that you should look at, which is whether or not the car uh, you can transfer the warranty. So if you, if you decide you've got a lemon uh, and you want to get out of it, um, can you transfer that warranty to the new owner? Or can you get back some of the unused portion? Um, there's a few different ways that, that uh, insurance policies will calculate the refund available to you. One's called the Rule 78, and um, another another company just simply will take the whatever's the best for them, time or mileage, and they'll just give you the difference back, which I think is amazing, no matter what the claim. Um, because the Rule 78 is, is the Rule 78 minus claims. So if you know you paid a few grand for a policy, but you've already made a few grand in claims, you're not getting any money back. Um, but the good news there is, is that that policy can still be sold in its advantage to the buyer of your car when you sell it privately. You still have two years left, you can still advertise, say, hey, this car's got two years of, of, of mileage left. 
Oh, sorry, warranty life. Uh, so that's another way you can see you've got a, a quality um, uh, 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 policy. Uh, lastly, I would say the underwriter. Uh, be a little bit leery of people who underwrite their own products um, because then they will say, oh, no, we don't want to pay for this one. And we'll find a reason not to because there'll be nowhere for you to go to say, hey, man, what's up? Whereas a, a good, solid, big time, big name underwriter um, would, you know, like, like Lloyd's, for example, or uh, Industrial Alliance. Um, you know, you can Google them, find out who the underwriter is and, and Google them and make sure they're a, a big company in, in the name of insurance. Um, you know, and you'll be able to tell by the landing page if it's if it looks real hokey pokey and uh, you know then then it's could be a gong show getting getting your your, your claims paid right um, so that would be one of the other ways that I would uh, say that you're looking at a good policy and then uh, so I, w I went into detail a little bit about uh, whether or not you so, so warranties you can put into your financing um, uh, um, but if you're not paying pay cash you can still finance the warranty through several warranty companies just be leery of how much interest they're going to charge you. And um, I would say the deductible, look at that uh, and, and think about, you know, how often you're going to make claims versus how much or down the price of the policy is going to go based on how many claims you make. Uh, I always go for, I always go for about a claim and a half a year. On a four year policy, I do around six claims. That's what I would say is pretty normal. Because every time you take your car in for a service, right? Let's say you got a Toyota, you take the car in Toyota, they know you've got the policy because when you go in there, you say, hey, look, I bought this. Or if you bought it from that Toyota dealer, they're going to put it in the system, right? So Larry there, the, the administrator is going to sit down and say, like, oh, hey, Mr. So-and-so, that's great to see your car here. Oh, yeah, and you've got extended warranty. You don't think they're going to try to find something they could charge? That's at least once a year. And you go change your oil. At least once a year, they're going to find something guaranteed. And then after that, it's, oh, hey, this doesn't work, or this stopped working, or this is making a noise. You know, six claims, I think, is, is pretty normal in a four-year period. Uh, so deductibles, you want to do the math there and figure out what's right and what's wrong, right? Or it makes sense. And then, so take also, look, when the business office is, is pitching you which to take, think about what you need. Because, believe me, when they're pitching you what's available, they're pitching you sort of harder first on what makes them the most money. Now, these are always negotiable. Um and uh, I haven't thought about how to express what you should pay, but in general, I would say uh, if they're offering you an elite um, exclusionary gold plan, and let's say, you know, let's say you've got a BMW or Mercedes, that plan will probably be for a four year 80, probably be in the six, six ish thousand range. And I bet you could probably get. 2500 bucks off easily i would say the, the, the cost on that policy probably be 3500 bucks if it's a, a mid-range plan like the listed items uh when it's not exclusionary it's called listed items so literally you see here all these items that are listed out it's listed items the elite uh the uh, uh, exclusionary here is it's not a list of items it's the exclusions list so that's the difference right it's exclusionary list versus listed items of what is covered and um, yeah, so that's uh, 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 I can't remember what I was talking about there. Uh, we were talking about uh, different types, listed items for elite. Oh, pricing. Yeah, yeah. So if it's if it's a listed item, and what's interesting is is the cost wouldn't be that much different. So on a four year eighty listed item for that Mercedes or BMW. You probably be looking at a cost of maybe three grand. I mean, literally five hundred dollars difference. So that's why I say, you know, you could get the discount and and ask for the elite plan, and the dealership would be only losing five hundred bucks because the difference between the the, the, the exclusionary and the listed item would be forty or eighty would only be five hundred dollars or so. So that's my advice there. But anyway, it's always negotiable. And I think if you, you could aim for, let's say, 50% off and try to get as, as much as you can there, you'd, you'd be golden. Um, or uh, let's say there's another plan. You could ask them to include that plan for free, uh, depending on what the, the price was. Um, if the other plan they're trying to sell you is, you know, 1500 bucks to grand, you say, okay, well, I'll, t I'll, take, I'll take both at 
this price, right? Um, that would be another negotiating trick, I would say, because there's there's definitely there's definitely uh, lots of markup in there. Uh, but I, you know, again, every, people who who make money on these, oh, there's something I could talk about. So uh, when I had meetings with all the reps from all these different uh, warranty companies, you know, we sold fancier cars at the, the boutique dealership we had, and uh, our our profit loss ratio is generally hovering at about 150%. So if the policy was 5,000 bucks cost, the customer was making $7,500 in claims, average. So some people more, some people less, but on average it's 150%. So, you know, you can't really, I don't think, go wrong. Uh, just get the best deal you can. And, you know, like, like I said about that Aston Martin fellow who had his Aston Martin new engine, $49,000. He doesn't care about a $500 deductible. And he doesn't care that the policy was five grand or whatever it was. He doesn't care. He's, he, he, he would, he'll buy two, he'll buy, he'll buy two warranties next time, right? He'll be ahead for the rest of his life on that one car, one claim, one policy. Um, and I think it's just a great way to, to, uh, to own a car. Uh, so let's see what other, what other notes do I have myself here? Um, uh, uh, I think I've covered it all here. So I wanted to go over, uh, what, a what, a quickly, I know I've been talking for way too long. Um, what a, this is secure drive and, uh, which is LGM by the way, which is, which is, uh, this company here. Uh, let's see if you can't see a bit of definitely get any branding here, but secure drive here behind my very pretty face. Uh, and so here's their, here's their elite. Uh, this is an actual policy. I just redacted it. Um, hopefully I redacted it up, but, uh, you know, you have 2015 Lexus RCF, very lovely car. And, uh, and here you go. So what, this is an elite wrap. Oh, so there's a little something I could talk about. A wrap is basically a warranty that you're purchasing that will tag on to the end of the current policy that's still alive and ticking on the car you're buying. Uh, and that's always, by the way, the best time to buy a warranty when the car still has warranty. It's best time to buy warranty because that's when it's the cheapest. As soon as your car falls out of warranty, you are most likely not going to be able to get exclusionary coverage anymore. You'll be relegated to the listed item coverage. And then not only that, the amount you pay for the same four year 80 with less coverage because you know the, the uh, uh, exclusionary covers more and the listed item covers a little bit less, like 80%, right? You'll be paying more than you would have a few a year ago or a few uh, kilometers or miles ago, you'll be paying more for less coverage than you would have. Which is again why, if you're looking at a car that's just out of warranty, you might want to consider a car that's just in warranty, depending on whether the car qualifies for exclusionary or not. Um, because you'd think that, oh, it's older and it's less coverage, it's less money. No, you can get the newer car, pay a little bit more money, and then save the difference in the warranty because the exclusionary warranty turns out to be less because it's still got factory coverage, the car that you're looking at. So here, for example, right, Elite Wrap, 84 months. Oh, so another thing, I, I keep, there's always more, right? Uh, the exclusionary warranty goes from in-service date. So if you're going to get a one-year extension on your factory co covered car, it wouldn't be 12 years, 20, or, I'm sorry, 12 months, 20. It would be you'd be getting a 60 month uh, 100 or 60 month, you know, 60 miles because it goes from in service days, literally extending the factory warranty from when it was first in service. So if you want to keep the car for four more years, you're going to get an 84 or sorry, a 96, whatever, 140 kilometers or whatever you decide because you can you can adjust it right you can you can pay for more kilometer coverage or mileage coverage you can pay for less depending on how much you're going to drive right that's why it's unique to you you've got to really figure out in advance how much mileage you plan on putting on that car uh, that way you're not paying for too little and then get left short like oh the engine blows up you know and then the warranty just you know ended a few miles ago ah uh, or you're paying for way too many miles, like you you time out and you've still got a, a whole bunch of kilometers not used. Well, you, that's wasted money because you you timed out at four years or eight years, you know, from in service. So you got you got to 
plan those out. And usually there's a drop down menu that the business office person can show you. And you can say, oh yeah, you know, eight years, I'm gonna go on the odometer, I'm gonna go to about 100,000 miles, so that'll be over here, and boom, there's your, there's your policy price right there, right? And you can, you can negotiate on that price. But take a look here, right? Here's a $250 deductible, totally fair. Uh, deductibles generally go from zero to 500. Um, they don't generally go higher than that. Um, yeah. So here's 250, totally awesome. And it's 84 months. So he's extending his uh, policy three years and about uh, 20,000 kilometers because it'd be a four year 80, right? And look at the price on that. Bumper to bumper exclusionary coverage for three years an extra 20,000 K, 2,900 bucks. Anything goes wrong with the car, paid, done. I'll take two, please. That's just, it's just it's such a great, you don't have to worry about stuff. Um, and what would that be on your four year financing or four year leasing? That'd be 60 bucks a month or something like that, you know? Come on. Uh, so there you go. So in here, you can look down <clears throat> and uh, you they should be able to give you redacted policies uh, or empty policies for you to read the fine print, uh, limit per repair. Um, oh, there's one more thing I guess I should talk about. So certain policies uh, will have no limit to repair. Um, and, uh, and that would be uh, up to two different prices. And this is one thing you gotta, you gotta remember uh, and know and ask. Okay, so write that down. The no limit to repair is not actually no limit to repair though only on any one repair or aggregate, which means a group of repairs, only pay up to the price of the car you paid, right? So if, let's say you paid hundred grand, they'll pay up to hundred grand in total claims, uh, you know, 10, $10,000 claims or two $50,000 claims or one $100,000 claim. And then it's, that's it, they're done. Or they'll pay an aggregate up to the current black book value of the car, which you have to watch out for. Your business office should know the difference uh, and most don't. So you've really got to press them for it. And that's a good excuse to, not that you don't want to buy it right away, but if they don't know these answers, they're not doing the job right. They should know this stuff inside and out, man, because it's, it's so key to why you're buying it, right? If the difference is, is the aggregate up to the purchase price of the car? It's obvious, 100 grand. I paid 100 grand for my car, you know how much, right? But if it's not, let's say it's the black book value. What if you made a few small claims, right? And then it's now three and a half, four years later, you got a five year policy, whatever. But it's getting closer to the end of the policy's life. And the black book value on your car has tanked down, and you've already made a few claims, and the engine drops out, because it's got way more mileage on it now, and all these things, right? And the engine drops out, and they want 20 grand for a new engine. But they're like, oh no, no, you've already claimed five, six, seven, nine, ten grand, and the black book value of your car is only uh you know uh twenty grand. So I know a new engine for your car is, is twenty grand, but we're only liable for for the wholesale value of your car, which is twenty grand, less your current claims, which is ten. So we're only gonna pay ten grand. Now you're on the hook to write a check for ten grand. I don't know. I mean, it's great that they're covering the first 10 grand. So you're ahead and you, you know, you're, you're profiting. But the reason why I like warranties is because you don't have to put any money out of your pocket other than a deductible. You know, where are you going to get 10 grand from? Right? How, you know, how long is it going to pay you to take, pay, to take to pay that back? Or, you know, there's, there's your family trip, you know, vacation, wintertime vacation, summertime vacation. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, man. So these are the things you got to ask. Is the aggregate value of the no limits per claim the purchase price of the car? or the current black book of the car, uh, less existing claims, uh, already claimed claims. And then, so some people, um, depending on what kind of car you have, if you're getting a, like a cheaper, more reliable, smaller, you know, cheaper car, your claims aren't gonna be that big. So the, 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 the benefit of having a, a no claim limit is gonna be not that great. So what you can do is, is, is a lot of companies will have a 5,000 per claim, 2,500, 1,000 per claim limit. And so I wouldn't go down too low, um, but let's say $5,000 will basically cover pretty much anything in a compact car, depending on what your make model mileage it has, you know? But even if the engine goes, I mean, you can, you can put in a used engine for five grand all day long, 
So you're still kind of covered, you know? And so uh, that limits the liability of the warranty company. So when you go from no limit to 5,000 K per limit, Hey, there'll be less. we'll sell you this policy for a lot less. And so that is a question you could ask the business office, whether or not there's an option for 5,000 K or a 2,500 per claim limit, and then, and see how much down the price goes. If the price doesn't go down too much, just, just pay the money. I mean, unless you're driving a, I don't know, a Nissan Micra, you know, or something that's, I mean, then, then don't, but if you're driving anything substantial, you know, 30 grand or more, take the no claim limit, man. And you know, why, why wonder if you're going to end up having to write a check for two or three grand or more because the claim limit is 2,500 or 5,000, just go with the no claim and spend an extra $11 a month on, on, on your car payment or probably less actually. But anyways, uh, so that's one thing you could do, look at. So limit to repair, that's what I'm looking at here. Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. There's other good stuff here too. Uh, so here, the Schedule A shows you what's covered. So just like the brochure that I showed you earlier, um, you have uh, Basic Plus and Elite, right? So we'll show you a tick mark and what's covered on all these different things. Um, other components. So here we go. If you purchased an Elite Secure Drive plan, exclusionary. All other components of your vehicle will, are included in your plan other than the excluded components list. Uh, and once again, I should have pulled up an exclusions list here for you, which I might be able to do, um, but uh, I've already talked plenty. So anyways, you can see engine turbocharger, um, transfer case, uh, drive axle, right? That's the, the basic. Now, uh, uh, and that's so is electric hybrid, but now you get into steering, brakes, electrical, um, uh, air conditioner um, and all these things which is the plus the mid-grade policy and then enhanced it's, it's um, and then here at the end supplementary restraint system which was part of the extra coverage from exclusionary along with all the other things that wouldn't be on a list because there is no list it's just a list of exclusions that things they don't cover like car accidents and vandalism uh, and a few other little interesting things i talked about earlier uh, so there was something interesting that I wanted to show you here. Yeah, here's the here's Schedule B, exclusions list. So emissions system, uh, and I want to get into that a little bit because um, uh, emissions systems is considered a wear item. So like brake pads and tires is not covered because it's it's a wear item. Clutches, you know, like a manual car clutch, you can burn that stuff out in a week. It's not covered. If you don't know how to drive your car, it's your own problem, right? You live at the top of a big hill and you wear out your brakes super fast going down every day riding those brakes. That's not a, it's a thing. It's, it's, it's your own, it's your own uh, thing to repair as opposed to living in a, in a, in a town that's flat, you know? Uh, so software upgrades also not covered. Uh, I told you about exhaust systems, uh, mobile phones. That's more for new cars. Uh, for example, Tesla, you use your phone to get in your car. Now, if you lose your phone, um, I, I think there's actually some policies that, oh yeah, the tire and rim. I was told you about the other policy that uh, covers um, your key fobs. They actually cover your mobile phone now. Why? Because your mobile phone is your key to get in and out of the car. So what's really awesome is if you lose your cell phone, because it's your now your key, they'll they'll get you a new cell phone. But it's not, it's not this policy. This is specifically excluded. Uh, like I said, keys and key fobs are not included in in uh, exclusionaries. Uh, um, or listed items, any any warranty it does not does not cover key fobs. Anyways, they also don't cover shop supplies, but in general they they kind of do because as long as it's not as long as the bill doesn't say shop supplies twenty bucks, as long as they just leave that off and put it somewhere else, call it something else, they'll just pay it. Um, maintenance components, yeah, so that's obvious. So like, you know, unless they unless they replace the engine, they're gonna put oil in it. But if your car needs to get an oil change. It's not covered, man. These new brakes are not covered. Uh, disc brakes, that's a wear item as well. The, the discs themselves uh, and other exclusions. Yeah, more wear items like shock, shock absorber struts. So uh, like I said, I'll just highlight this here for a second. Boom shakalaka, right? So a lot of stuff like uh, um, uh, door handles, uh, et cetera, et cetera, aren't covered. Uh, as you can see, your friction disc clutch, clutch assemblies uh, on standard transmissions. Uh, bearing plates. 
So that is not a regular type bearing that you would expect, let's say like a skateboard wheel where there's little ball bearings rolling around the shaft in between two sort of cups, one on the inside, one on the outside. Bearing plates are, for example, on your pickup truck in the back, the big axle going across. Um, there's actually no bearings in there. There's just what they call plain bearings. It's just a, a nice smooth flat surface on the axle and a nice smooth flat surface on the casing and there's just oil in between and it just rolls in there and it just rolls. That's it. There's no bearings. There's the bearing surface, the, bear, the weight bearing surface. And so that is not covered. Um, so headlights and lights, including LEDs, is also not covered. Um, uh, batteries, weather strips. Oh yeah, so like rubber moldings aren't covered. So for example, the little rubber moldings that sort of clean your window as, it, as your window goes up and down, say on a dewy morning, you roll your window down and up to get rid of the dew off your window. Uh, those things are not covered. Bright metal, which is chrome, essentially, chrome. Uh, upholstery, yeah, same thing, or leather, uh, which is why you would get the tire and rim package I keep talking about, but I won't get into here. Uh, paint, uh, ornamentation, you know, like your Mercedes-Benz logo, etc. Uh, bumpers, again, that's you know, that's why we don't call it bumper to bumper, right? Body sheet metal, which is Thor Dings, which again is the tire and rim thing I'm telling you about. Um, structural body parts, tires, which I've said a thousand times before aren't covered, they're wear items, right? So there you go, that's that. Uh, and is there anything else that's interesting in here? Um, yeah, so certain claims free rewards. So. I don't know anyone who's ever made this, uh, who got to the end, but there are claim-free rewards whereby they'll they'll uh, give you the full purchase price towards another warranty on your new car if you get to the end and buy it within a certain months of of it uh, expiring. They'll take the full amount you paid, full amount, claim-free, and they'll put it towards a new warranty on the new car, uh, which might not cover, you know, or might overcover, whatever. But at least you get a full warranty on the next car you buy which is great if you actually made no claims. Uh, or what they'll do is they'll um, they'll give you $2,000 credit towards your next car um, or purchase at that dealer, at the returning dealership. Uh, and then lastly, they'll they'll give you cold hard cash, a thousand bucks. Anyway, so those are, those are three of the ways that you get a claims free reward, but I don't know anyone who's done it. Uh, mostly what happens is people buy a two, three, four, five, 10 year from in-service date policy, right? And, and you know, especially guys, they buy a car and exactly 24 months later, they want something new. They're like, oh, I saw that car. Paul, what would it take to get me into that car with this as a trade? I want that one. And sure enough, I've got them the policy, right? So I'm like, ah, okay, well, so you, then there's the rule of 78 or, you know, less claims, blah, 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 and give them a credit towards the next warranty. It's never really money lost. Um, because you're always covered while you had the car um, and there should be some remaining unused portion of the warranty to put towards something new, the new policy on the new car. So it's, I'm never really stressed out about it. And uh, let's see here, what else? Uh, roadside assistance, basically all uh, warranties do come with roadside assistance, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but be careful, you make one roadside assistance claim, you're no longer claim free. Even though it wasn't like a, you know, replacing an alternator or, a, or a whatever in the car, you're still, they're still having to pay out of pocket to, you know, go get you some gas or fix a pop tire or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, so be leery of that. You know, if you're getting near the end of your warranty and you want your claim free reward, don't be calling them for a, you know, um, a, a, a tow truck to, come give you a jump or something weird like that because that would extend your claim free and then you're done. Anyway, um, a good way to do that actually is if you get the tire and rim package, tire and rim packages also come with roadside. So make sure when you put it in your phone, the roadside assistance, it's the tire and rim roadside assistance, not the warranty uh, roadside assistance, right? Uh, so let's see here. Let's see if there's anything else. Schedule E. Uh, yeah, if you fail to, um, you can read this as well. You can pause the video here and read it. Um, but this would, should you, not, you, you might not be eligible to buy the warranty if you, um, if you're using the car for commercial use, you can do light commercial use, but there's, there's a difference there too. D uh, light commercial use is, um, you know, light, sort of like using the car to drive to and from, you know, let's say you're, you're a painter, right? So you've, 
and you've got a pickup truck and you're just driving sort of to and from work and you load stuff in and out of the back. It's a light use, commercial use, uh, and you can still get these policies for them. But instead of a deductible amount, what they do is they charge you 20% of the repair. Um, and I think the policy might be a little bit more money as well. Uh, but make sure you know what the light commercial use uh, extra amount they're charging you for is and how it works, because you'll have to factor that into whether or not it become, you know, makes sense for you. Uh, let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm looking through, make sure it's all good. Um, yeah, so there you go. So, so that's that one. Uh, and here's a service agreement from Route 66, and you can see here that it's going to be. Let's see, let me start at the very top. Let's just do a real quick, and then I'll end. I don't want to go longer than an hour. Sorry, but I'm hopefully, hopefully, I'm giving you lots of gold here, you know. Um, uh, so here, here's your name. Uh, so, so ah, I've already gone through this and highlighted it. Uh, da, 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 da. What's covered? Uh, easy to factory factory type coverage. Here you go. So this would be what's covered it includes all items covered under the manufacturer's original coverage. There you go. So this is exclusionary. Fantastic. Um, and then uh, I, I I read through here, and you should as well. You know, it's take as long as you like in the business office. Sit there and read it every line and ask the question. Um, but after watching this video, maybe even you have to rewatch it to take better notes or pick up things that maybe I only gleaned on and that are pretty important. But for example, there was one line in here, um, what this item does not cover exclusion. So it's again, it's exclusionary coverage, right? Because there's no, what you'll notice in here, there's no giant list of what is covered. Right? It's only a list of what is not covered. It's exclusionary. So that's good. So you read through there, make sure there's nothing weird. For example, they might throw, uh, um, they might throw into something like, uh, I've, I've seen this before too, uh, in mid-range products, listed item products. It's, you know, it should be covering the, the, the DVD or Navi console and it's not, and it'll put it way down. It's such a tricky trick, but they'll talk about a whole bunch of things that are really cheap and, and you know, Cheap and cheerful, and you're like, ah, so what? It doesn't cover that, that, or that. And you get right near the bottom, and it'll say, navigation unit, DVD unit. What? Well, that that could be ten grand all of a sudden, right? So it's like, no wonder that policy is so cheap. It's because they're, they're they're getting it in here that they don't have to pay for that if it should break down. And what's interesting is, is usually that's the whole screen, right? Which covers your DVD, your Navi, also covers your heat seat controls, your air conditioning controls, your car maintenance, everything. Right, your your backup camera, all of it. So you, you want that to be included in there because a lot of modern day cars have it all encapsulated in that one thing. And they're, they're not going to try to fix it. They're just going to replace it. You got to have that thing covered, man. Um, and then make sure, here you go, visa reimbursement. So what that means is, is if you pay for it by visa, they will reimburse your visa. But you have to make sure that it's not a reimbursement program in that you have to pay and then you've got a battle to get paid by the insurer. No, no, no. You, what you want is, is will these people pay the place you take the car to get fixed at? Will they pay them before you even pick up the car? They call you and say, hey, Mr. So-and-so, your car is ready to be picked up today at five. We'll see you then. You go, great, see you then, right? They should be paying that company before you even show up to pick up your car, right? It's not you're gonna get there and like, oh, okay, so you owe us seven thousand bucks. You're like, ah, oh, well, what, uh, then how do you, where do you, where do you get seven grand, right? And and then then you've got to go back and you've got to make the claim. And then they can start fighting them. Well, when you see all the receipts, no, this that. And really, what happens is is the repair facility has to call up the insurer, the warranty company, and sort of hash it out and battle it out, and they'll get it they'll get it fixed and repaired and and paid before you even pick up the car. You don't want that brain damage. Let let the service shop do that. They're, they're paid professionals to do it. That's part of the reason why they're profiting and making money to deal with this. And you don't you don't want to do it. It's not worth it. You've already, you've already done your job, which is paid for the policy. That's you're you're paid, right? Uh, -da -da. Transfer procedure, right? Make sure it's always a transferable warranty. That's always good. Um, find out what your obligation is oil change wise. Make sure it's not one of those ones where you gotta change your oils twice a year. Um, 
repair authorization, right? We need to call first, right? Uh, let's see here. What else is interesting in here? This is the same one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this would be a, this would be a, um, uh, and it's a roadside emergency right here. It is again. So this would be a, 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 an exclusionary policy. So this is, this is a good one. Depending on what you're, you have to pay for it, right? Um, and I don't know if they, I don't know where it talked about the limits per repair. Um, you could pause the, you could pause this anywhere and probably find it yourself, but uh, that's just something you negotiate with the business office, whether you not you want no limit to repair, 5,000, 2,500, or 1,000, um, depending on what kind of car you're getting into, what sort of coverage you want. But in very general terms, the cost difference between no limits to repair and 5,000, it's so small. Like the cost to the dealership is that that's probably less than $500. So for, so how do I explain this? So depending on what they're saying, like how much less the price is for the policy, understand that the price difference to them is only 500 bucks or less. And I would say that for 500 bucks or less, the peace of mind to know that it'll be like your engine can drop out, which does happen. It's happened to me and I get that call all the time at the office. It needs a new engine. It happens, man. Uh, so to have that peace of mind, 500 bucks, done. So uh, let's see here what else. I think that's it, guys. So if I, by chance, didn't talk enough and didn't cover something that maybe you wanted to find out about, or you are in the middle of buying a car right now and the dealership's saying this or that and you're unsure, you can leave a comment below. I'll get to it. I'll answer the question. Uh, or if it's something sweeping, maybe I'll do a little addendum video, a quick, a, a quick one, a five minute video on, on, on the topic that I may have missed with regards to warranties. Um, or I'll, I'll expand a bit more on something that I did cover and maybe you did do it well enough. But otherwise, uh, like my channel, subscribe so that, uh, you can get uh, the quickest, uh, uh, notifications on, on what I am, uh, putting up next. And uh, again, leave me a comment, man. I'm happy to answer questions. I'm here to help here to serve. Uh, and I think I just push uh, stop on this. Thanks, everybody. See you later.